Welcome to the Applications part of Edition of Decimals. Well, it's important that we know how to add decimals, but it's also important that we know how to use that skill in the real world to solve some real-world problems. Let's reread this problem together and see if we can figure out how to use Addition of Decimals to solve it. It said in 1995, there were 8 and 6 tenths million people living in Mexico City. Experts believe in 2015, there will be 13 million more people living in Mexico City. How many people will be living in Mexico City in 2015? Well, let's work this, let's work this problem together. In 1995, 8.6 million people were living in Mexico City, and the experts are saying that in 2015, there will be 13 million more people. And then we want to know how many people will be living in Mexico City in 2000. Well, if there are going to be 13 million more, we have to add 13 million to the 8 and 6 tenths million. Now, 13 million is a whole number, but we know we can put, we can put a filler there. We have to put the decimal point after the whole number, so we line up the decimals, and now we just add. 6 and 0 is 6, 8 and 3 is 11, so I carry 1, 1 and 1 is 2. So, in 1995, experts said there were six, uh, 8, 8 and 6 tenths million people, and they're telling us in 2015 there'll be 13 million more, so we added those two together. And in 2015, if the experts are correct, there will be 21 and 6 tenths million people living in Mexico City. Good. Well, let's try. I'm going to put a couple of problems up for you and ask you to um, put the DVD on. We'll read them and then I'll ask you to put the DVD on or the video on pause and ask you to work the problem and turn it back on again. Well, let's see what we have here. In 1990, there were 40 and 7 tenths million automobiles in the United States. In 2000, there were 94 and 6 tenths million more automobiles. How many automobiles were, in, were there in 2000? Okay, so use addition of decimals to solve this problem. So put the video or DVD on pause. And then, when you work the problem, turn it back on and we'll work it together. Well, okay. Let's see how you did. 1990, there were 40 and 7 tenths million automobiles in the United States. In 2000, there were 94.6 million and we want to know how many a uh, million more so if it means million more then we have to add 94.6 million and that'll tell us how many automobiles there were in 2000 this is how many there were in 1990 and then in 2000 there were 94 and 6 tenths million more so we're adding so 7 and 6 gives us 13 Carry the 1, 1 and 4 is 5, and then we add 4, and 9 is 13. So, in 2000, there were 135 and 3 tenths million automobiles in the United States. Good. We'll try another one here. Let's take this one down. Put this one up. The average temperature in April in Rome, Italy is 16 and 4 tenths degrees Celsius. The average temperature in Athens, Greece in April is 3 and 4 tenths degrees Celsius higher 
than in Rome. What is the average temperature in April in Athens? Well, okay. You go ahead and put the video or DVD on pause, work this problem, and then turn it back on, and then we'll go over it. Okay. All right, let's see. So the average temperature in April in Rome, Italy, was 16 and 4 tenths degrees Celsius, the Celsius scale. In the United States, we use the Fahrenheit scale, but in Europe and almost all the rest of the world, they use the Celsius scale, but that's not important here. Now, the average temperature in Athens, Greece, in April is 3.3 and 4 tenths degrees more. So more means we'll have to add that because they want us to be able to calculate what the average degrees of temperature is in Athens. And it's 3.4 tenths degrees more than it is in Rome. So if we add these two together, eight, uh, four and four is eight. Put our decimal point. Six and three is nine, not carrying anything, and one. So then we can say that the average temperature in Athens, Greece, is 19 and 8 tenths degrees Celsius. 19 and 8 tenths degrees Celsius because it's 3 point and 4 tenths degrees more than it is in Rome. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's put this one up. Okay, at the last census, there were nine and four tenths million people in Madrid, Spain. There were three and three tenths million people living in the suburbs outside of Madrid. What was the combined population of Madrid and its suburbs? Well, okay. So in the city itself, in Madrid itself, there were nine and four tenths million. And the suburbs outside of Madrid, there were three and three tenths million. And we want to know what the population is of Madrid and its suburbs. So we simply add four and three, seven, nine and three, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the combined population was 12 and seven tenths million people. All right, I think we may have one more. I'm not sure if we have any more. Ah, no, we do have one more. This one I'll let you work on your own, and then we'll work it together. Let's just read it out loud. Susan bought 4.5 pounds of potatoes, three and eight tenths pounds of peppers, and three pounds of rice from the grocery store. What was the total weight of her purchases? Okay, put the video on pause, work this problem, and then turn it back on and we'll take a look at how we solve it. All right. Let's take a look. Since we're interested in the total weight, total means that we're going to be adding. So we're going to add up all of her purchases. Well, she had four and five tenths pounds of potatoes, three and eight tenths pounds of peppers, and three pounds of rice. Now, three is a whole number, so we put it here and we can put a placeholder. And so now if we add all of these together, five and eight is 13. We put our decimal point right in line, carry the one. One and four is five, five and three is eight, nine, 10, 11. So the total weight of Susan's purchases was 11 and 3 tenths pounds. 11 and 3 tenths pounds. 
Well, excellent. That is our practice in real-world applications using addition of decimals, and thank you very much for your attention.